How's it going guys? Ready for some mind games? Today we're unleashing the Master of Deception, Zoroark. This trickster Pokemon uses its illusion ability to completely throw opponents off their game, setting you up for some crazy plays in Scarlet and Violet. Stick around as we showcase how Zoroark can completely turn the tide of battle. And hey, if you're ready to take your Pokemon battles to the next level, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for Scarlet and Violet content. Alright, let's jump into the action and see how Zoroark can turn every battle into a game of shadows and surprises. Okay, Reese has brought a pretty strong looking team with the Low Kicks, the Skeledurge, the Rillaboom, Goldengo, Swampert, and Salamence. Pretty awesome stuff, so I, I, I want to lead with Banette, because it does pretty well here. Poltergeist hurts a lot of their team. Um, they probably lead off with uh, Low Kicks anyway, so they'll probably go for a U-turn right off the bat. So, in hindsight, maybe I'm better off going with something else. Uh, maybe Great Tusk could be a good lead, but they could lead with Swampert or Rillaboom expecting that. Um, I really think they'll lead with Low Kicks though, so I am. Te I think I will just lead off with Great Tusk. Try and get my Stealth Rocks up straight away because they do not have a Hazard Clearer, which is fantastic. Love to see it. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. So they're going to lead off with Kick Back, the Low Kicks, as I led off with Great Tusk. So I, I, made this, I successfully made the right lead, which is always nice. Um, now we get a free Stealth Rocks because they have to go for a U-turn here. So we go for a Stealth Rocks. We're going to get some Rocky Helmet Chip. They actually go for a First Impression, which isn't going to do too much damage to us, even with that Tinted Lens. And Rocky Helmet is going to come back and break a potential Focus Sash, which is great. So um, Stealth Rocks is up, and now we get a free attack on whatever we want because they stayed in to go for a First Impression. So if we assume they're going to go for the Rillaboom Switch, we should go for an Ice Spinner here. So they withdraw the Low Kicks as expected. Are they going to go Rillaboom or Swampert? Caesar. Is that Caesar Salad? The Rillaboom comes in, which is great. We made the right prediction. They bring the Rillaboom in. They get the Grassy Terrain up. And then we're going to Ice Spinner away that Grassy Terrain like it's nothing and deal some nice damage to the uh, Rillaboom, which is fantastic. So um, there we go. Ice Spinner comes through. We get rid of the uh, Grassy Terrain, which is great. Uh, now our Earthquakes can still do some damage. Now I, I would stay in here, but Woodhammer will probably take me out. However, I don't really have the best switch in here. Except from Heatran, but Heatran's a risky one. Um, let's go Heatran anyway. Let's just go for it. So there we go. We withdraw our Tuscany, the Great Tusk. And we're going to go into our Heatran. Hopefully they don't predict this and go for a high horsepower. That would be bad, I'm okay. going. Um, they actually go for a Fake Out, which is fine. Fake Out's fine. Now, we can go for a Lava Plume here on anything we want, except from the Skeledurge and the Swampert, because they will resist it. Uh, Salamence as well, but Salamence really doesn't want to get burned. Now... I do have backup Stealth Rocks on this Heatran just in case uh, Tusk can't set them up, but um, we'll go for a Lava Plume anyway. It, even, no matter what they bring in, it's going to be fine. So they actually go for a knockoff. They're just going to sack off their Rillaboom at this point, uh, which is fair enough. We go for a Lava Plume though, and that is going to take out the Rillaboom in no problemo. So down goes the Gorilla, which is fantastic. Freezer would be proud. Moxie comes in, which is going to be the reliable partner of the Swampert. Very big threat to my Heatran, being water and ground. So we're going to have to switch out. I'm leaning towards the Ninetales switch. I am going to go with the Ninetales switch. I think Ninetales is a fine switch here at Swampert. We can go for an Aurora Veil. We can go for a Freeze Dry. You name it, we can go for it. So we withdraw the Heatran, which is great. And we're going to go into Ninetales, who after a defense boost, should be able to take an Earthquake pretty well if they do go for an Earthquake. They might go for a Stealth Rock, though, which is fine if they do. Uh, so Snow Warning's in effect. They do go for a Liquidation, though. That's fine. They probably expected something else to come in. They probably expected maybe, I don't know actually what they were expecting there, but uh, Earthquake was always the better option there. If they don't have Earthquake, then I don't know what's going on. Let's go for an Aurora Veil anyway. I think they might be a banded Swampert set because of that damage. I think they might be banded, but they have stayed in here, which is ballsy, and they go for another Liquidation. And that does a lot of damage still as well. That's, that's in Snow with a defense boost from the Snow. So let's go for a Freeze Dry. Freeze Dry comes through. That's going to definitely take out the Swampert, right? Yeah, it takes out the Swampert in one clean hit, which is fantastic. So we Swampert down. We've got less to worry about, which is nice. In comes the Low Kicks once again. Now, they can go for a First Impression here, and it will take us out, unfortunately. Um, so do I switch out here? Do I switch out? Do I switch out? Do I switch out? I think I could go into Great Tusk here. Um, that could be a good option for us. Uh, we could go Bennett as well, because I can definitely take a First Impression. Um... But do I want to do that? Or should we just let the Ninetales go down? I think we just go for a Moonblast and let the Ninetales go down. First impression takes us out, unfortunately. Even as a resisted hit in the snow with Aurora Veil up, it's still going to take us out. So now, now, 
we can go into whatever we want. So I'm leaning towards the Zoroark. So I am going to go into Zoroark. Disguise is a Milotic. So they're probably thinking that a Skull's coming. And this might make them more inclined to go in something like the uh, Goldengo, maybe, or the Skeledurge. Um, they won't go Skeledurge. I think I go for a Flamethrower here all the time, though. Flamethrower comes through. And that's going to take out the low kicks, which is great. So they got Zoroark, because they wouldn't have stayed in if they thought it was a Zoroark. Tiamat comes in. What's that going to be? That's the Salamence. Nice. Uh, so Salamence is a very good one here. Um, we could stay in and go for a Night Days. I think I'm probably better off doing that. Um, so I will do that. I'll go for a Night Days real quick and just do some serious damage to this thing. So they are going to Terrastalize. What type are they going to Terrastalize into, though? Fairy? Steel? Poison? Ground? Steel. So they go Terra Steel, which is fine. I guess I could have gone for a Flamethrower if I predicted that, but I, I, would have meant, I wasn't meant to predict that. So they Terra Steel. We go for a Night Days, which is going to do a nice chunk of damage to them. Um, we do lose some HP from the Life Orb, and then they go for a Dragon Dance, which is terrifying. So... Dragon and Salamence is obviously a big threat. Now, we can't stay in here. Zoroark's so important this game. So important this game. So, we're going to have to do this. We'll go into our Bennett. So, there we go. We're drawing the uh, Milotic slash Zoroark. And we'll go into Puppetmon, the uh, Bennett. So, there we go. Bennett comes in. They go for an EQ, which is going to take us down to our Sash, I believe. Or not. Fair enough. And um, we just go for a Shadow Sneak here. Shadow Sneak should take out the Salamence from here, I believe. It lived on a sliver of HP, and then they go for an Iron Head, which is boosted by Terra and a Dragon Dance. Should take us out. It doesn't take us out. Bennett's actually bulkier than I thought. So let's go for another Shadow Sneak and take this thing out. There we go. Shadow Sneak comes through. Down goes the Salamence. After after plus a plus. Oh, Aurora Veil's up. That's why. Aurora Veil's up. I forgot about the Aurora Veil again. I always forget about the Aurora Veil. Which is just wore off now anyway, so I would have realized this sooner anyway. Pochita comes in. The Skeledurge. Now, we can stay in here. I'm going to stay in and go for a Poltergeist. They go for a Torch Song. It's going to take us out, but I wanted to go for a Pol Poltergeist anyway, just in case. Um, so Special Attack is going to be boosted, but you know what? It's fine, because I'm pretty confident Zoroark wins us the game here. Pretty confident Zoroark wins us the game. As there's the throat spray, which is awesome. So let's go with Zoroark once again. So Zoroark comes in, disguises my load tick once again. Now, they may not have... Well, they, they saw it use Flamethrower earlier, so they know it's this. So let's go for a Night Days. Night Days comes through. It should take out the Skeledurge. It does take out the Skeledurge, which is fantastic. And as long as the Gold Dengo is not choice to go off, we should win this. Sin comes in. Which is fine. Stones do dig in, which is also fine. Floating in the air with the air balloon. So they're not choice scarf, which is good to know. We then go for a night days, and that should take out the gold Dengo in one clean hit. It does! And that is going to be the game. So GG, Reese, that was a fun one. Zoroark really popped off. You gotta love it. GG. Okay, Violet has brought a pretty powerful team with the Ogapon Wellspring and Iron Boulder standing out. Scizor as well, and Enamorous can't rest on them. Um, so, you know what I think I might do in this game? I might just lead off with Bennett and just Poltergeist straight away. Um, because it does pretty well against the whole team except for the Ogre Pond, Since Ogre Pond doesn't have a hold item that can be used against it. Um, I think that's how that works anyway. But let's just lead with Bennett and then we'll just kind of go from there. I think that is the way to go. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun to my opponent Violet. They lead off with Scizorx. The Scizor. As I led off with Bennett's off the bat. So I just wanted to do, just punch some holes straight away. So I am just going to go straight for a Poltergeist. I don't see any reason not to. Because they go for a U-turn anyway. Which is going to do a considerable amount of damage to us. But it's fine. We can definitely take this. No problem. So let's see how this plays out. Heatran comes in. That's a good switch. But is it going to be able to take a Poltergeist to the face? That's the real question. So uh, we go for the Poltergeist. So we're going to miss. We don't miss, which is nice. It should 2k over Heatran unless it's physically defensive. It does, which is great. So they are leftovers, of course, though. So they're going to get some health back. Um, Bennett, you did a good job here. But we're going to have to get you out of there because this thing is just a monster. So let's go into our own Heatran. I think that's the way to go. They actually withdraw the Heatran, not wanting to take another Poltergeist to the face, probably. And they go into Rock to Fur, which is probably the Ogre Pond, right? No, it's the Iron Boulder, um, which is terrifying for us because that booster energy. Ah, that's why the booster energy. It would have stopped the Poltergeist because they consumed their items. So that's fair enough. That's a good switch. Um, but we withdraw our Bennett anyway. And we go into Hot Rod, which is great. So Hot Rod comes in. 
Now, obviously, we can't stay in here. This is a bad situation for us to be in. Um, our best bet is to go into Great Tusk, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. We withdraw our Hot Rod, the Heatran. And we're going to go straight into good old Great Tusk. Can't, can't beat a good old Great Tusk. There we go. Close combat comes through. That's fine. We can take that like a champ. It does get a crit, which is unfortunate. But it does lower the defenses as well. Now we can use this opportunity to go for a Stealth Frox. They withdraw. I'm glad to see this opponent knows what they're doing, which is really good. Um, and they go into Ogapon. Ogapon's a really good switch here. It's uh, you know Both its types are super effective against me. Um, so we go for a Stealth Rox, get them up on the other side of the field, so punish them a bit when they switch around. And now we have to switch out. So we're going to go into, um, I'm leaning towards my Lotic if we really want to expect an Ivy Cudgel, but it's risky. And I'm also leaning towards the Ninetales. I think I'm going to give the Ninetales option. I think Ninetales makes a fine switch here, so um, we'll do that. We'll get Ninetales in. Ninetales should be able to take care of this Ogapon, no problem. As there we go. Uh, provided they don't Swords Dance here, which would be bad, I'm okay. Um, so let's see how this plays out. So they go for a spike. So they're a spike setting Ogre Bomb, which is really interesting. So that's good to know. Good to know. Uh, now they don't have a Defogger. Oh, they have got a Sizzle potentially. But I think they're more than likely just Rapid Spin on the uh, Great Tusk. So I'm going to go for a Aurora Veil here. They do withdraw the Ogre Bomb, Probably going into the Heatran, which makes a lot of sense. Um, as Heatran does come in, which is fine. With the Heatran in, nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. Get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is nice. And then we get the Aurora Veil up, making it a lot easier for us to take care of this Heatran, which is fantastic. So, let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do. This time, I'm going to switch out into my Milotic, because Milotic can definitely handle this Heatran, no problem. And we just simply go for a Surf or something, but the Ogapon can come in here, which is important to note. So, um, Spikes are going to dig into Milotic as uh, they go for a Magma Storm, which is fine. Magma Storm is going to do no damage to us. It does trap us. But we have got the flip turn, so I'm not too worried about that. Now, the real question is, do we expect them to go into the Ogre Pond, or do, we, do they stay in Tanker Hit and go for a Stealth Rocks? That's the real question. So, I think, personally, they go into Ogre Pond. So, I'm going to predict that and go for an Ice Beam. Now, this could backfire, but the Heatran can't really touch us, so I'm not too worried about it. Ice Beam comes through. They do stay in, unfortunately. And uh, they go for a taunt. Interesting. So they think we're an attacking variant, which is fair enough. Now, this next turn, instead of going for an Ice Beam predicting the Ogre Pond to come in, I'm going to go for a Surf and just show them that we mean business, um, pretty much. Yep, just as I predicted, they completely underestimated the power of offensive Milotic. We get a crit, so they, we haven't given away that we're offensive yet because of the crit, which is fantastic. Now Ogre Pond comes in. This thing can heal us with a Wood Hammer or a Horn Leech, either or. Um, and it will sting quite a bit on the Milotic. So we don't want to stay in here, that's for sure. Um, do we go Ninetales? I think we go Ninetales, right? Yeah, let's go Ninetales. Uh, Ninetales doesn't care too much about this Ogre Pond, especially with the Aurora Veil being up and the Snow going to be up in a minute to boost its defense even further. So let's see what we can do here. So Ninetales comes through. Spikes are going to dig in. Snow's going to get set up. And now they go for an Encore, which isn't going to work, unfortunately, on my... Um, Nine tails. So, let's now that the Heatran's gone, let's go for a, uh, a Moonblast or a Freeze Dry. Scizor is so obvious here, though. But they might U-turn in order to do it. So, I guess we have to go for a Freeze Dry here. So, they don't U-turn. They just hard switch out, which is fine. Um, and they go into Scizor, which is also fine. That's what we expected. Nice and shiny. I don't like it. It's not nice and shiny. Nice and gross. Nice and gross. So, Freeze Dry comes through. Bit of damage, nothing too massive. No freeze, which is nice, I guess. Um, now what? Do we go Heatran? I think we go Heatran here all the time. So we're going to go Heatran now. They might have Defog. They could have Defog, you know? They definitely could. It's a possibility, that's for sure. It's definitely a possibility. So we get hurt by Spikes. They go for a Bullet Punch. It's not going to do much damage to us at all because we're four times resistant to it. And then we simply go for a Lava Plume, right? They withdraw the Scizor. What are they going to go into? Because it's a risky business switching on a Heatran. Um, Rock the Fur comes in. What was that again? That was the Great Tusk, right? No, the Iron Boulder. So we get some Stealth Rock Chip. And we're going to get some Lava Plume Chip as well. As there we go. Lava Plume comes through. And there's a bit of Chip. We might burn. We do burn, which is good. Very good. Very good indeed. So now we're in a very unique position because Heatran... Is low on HP. No, no, it's not low on HP. It's high in HP. 
and they're burned. So we could definitely take an earthquake and go for a flash cannon to take this thing out. Or the other, the Aurora Veil has just wore off. If we assume they're going to go for an earthquake, we should definitely go into Ninetales though and get that Aurora Veil back up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Vimto comes in, which is great. Nice and shiny, gotta love it. Uh, hurt by the spikes, which is unfortunate. And then they go for a sword dance. Ooh, that's scary. That's scary. Luckily, it doesn't have the boost energy. Oh, the snow stops this turn. I thought it was the next turn that it stopped. That's a miscalculation on my part. So now, what do we do? Um, if they're... Hmm. I guess we have to sack something off. Let's sack off uh, Milotic. We'll sack off Milotic. Going to Noel. Because Ma Milotic can't do much for us anymore. Let's be real. So spikes dig in, and then this mighty cleave that's coming our way is definitely going to KO us, even though the bird. Because um, it's a plus two, spe but plus two attack. So Milotic goes down, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Now. We're in a very unique position because we can go into Bennett and Shadow Sneak this thing to death. I'm pretty confident that Shadow Sneak will KO here. So, Puppy Mom comes through. There we go. Spikes do dig in, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. And uh, we just go for a Shadow Sneak here. No, no problems, no dramas. Shadow Sneak comes through. It should take out the Iron Boulder. Does take out the Iron Boulder, so Bennett gets a KO, which is nice. Nice and Bennett KO right there. Fort Ivoire comes in. That's going to be the Great Tusk. Now, I'm probably going to get hit with a knockoff here. But I'm going to go for a Poltergeist anyway just to get some damage off on this thing. They go for a Headlong Rush though. That's going to take us out. But it does lower their defenses, which is actually really insane. So, that's really insane for us. We get the Cursed Body on the Headlong Rush, which is fantastic. So now, is it time? Is it time for the Zoroark? Because we're Terra Poison. We got a nasty plot all over this thing. Let's go into Zoroark and let's Nasty Plot. So Vimto comes in the Alolan Ninetales, as so they, so they think. Hopefully they haven't paid attention to the health bar. Because uh, a real Alolan Ninetales is a bit lower. Let's try and go for a Nasty Plot. I don't think they close combat here. I think, if anything, they switch into Scizor. Right? So we Nasty Plot here. They're going to Terra. Oh, no. What are they going to Terra into? This might be over for Zoroark. Might be over for Zoroark. Steel. Okay. Okay. Terra Steel's fine. So Great Tusk comes in. Terra Steel's in our faces. We Nasty Plot. And uh, Ninetales can get Nasty Plot, so this still doesn't give it away necessarily. Rapid Spin, eh? Interesting. So Rapid Spin comes through. Which is unfortunate. Now, here's the thing, right? Stones disappear. Do we Terra? Based on that rapid spin damage, which was neutral, I think a resist to close combat won't do as much damage. So let's go for a Terra Poison Flamethrower right now. They withdraw the Great Tusk. They withdraw the Great Tusk. And they go into Enamorous. Interesting. So they must have Rapid Spin, Headlong Rush, Stealth Rocks, and something else. Ice Spinner, maybe. But let's go for that Terra Poison. Like so. Terror Poison like so. And a plus two Flamethrower should still do a respectable amount to this Enamorous. So let's go for the Flamethrower now. Oh, it cleanly takes it out. Cleanly takes it out in one hit. That's Enamorous gone. That's awesome. Ogapon comes in. That's fine. Ogapon can come in all he likes. And um, we go for a Sludge Bomb here. We have to go for a Sludge Bomb here. And um, they go for the Ivy Cudgel though. That's going to take us out unfortunately. Zoroark goes down. But well, Zoroark did well. It scared out the Great Tusk after a rapid spin. And it KO'd the Enamorous in one shot with a non-stab neutral move. Um, which is really cool. Really cool. So uh, now we've got Ninetales in the back. So let's go Ninetales. So Vimto comes in. No doubt they're going to switch into Scizor here. No doubt they're going to switch into Scizor here. There's, there's a Snow Warning. Um, we go Aurora Veil just in case they go Scizor. Ivy Cudgel comes through. That's going to sting a little bit, but not too much. As it doesn't get the KO, unfortunately, for them. We get the Aurora Veil up. Maybe I should have freeze-dried there. I think Aurora Veil is more important, to be fair. So now we freeze-dry, just because, why not? They actually withdraw the Ogre Pond. Interesting. It's not a speed tie, so I don't know why they withdraw there. And they go into Sizzle. So either way, I mean, Sizzle's a perfect switch here, so it's fine. 
It's absolutely fine. So we go for a freeze right here 100 at a time. Boom. Bit of damage. No freeze. That's good to know. Um, now we can definitely switch out. Um, the question is, what do we go into? So I'm leaning towards Heatran. So I'm going to go Heatran real quick. So we withdraw. They might go for a U-turn expecting us to um, switch out. If they do, that's a good play. Spikes are going to dig in. U-turn comes through. That's fine. We can use Ninetales as fodder. Unless we can rapid spin away the Stealth Rock somehow, which I don't think we can. Fortivoir comes in, which is going to be the Great Tusk. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. So now what do we do? Do we sack off Ninetales? I think we have to sack off Ninetales because we don't want to give him a rapid spin, right? So we sack off Ninetales here all the time. All the time we sack off Ninetales here. So Vimto comes through. There we go. Dies to the spikes, which is fine. And Vimto goes down, which is unfortunate for the Ninetales. So um, they did try and go for a headlong rush, which is good to know. Um, I would like to see more moves, but you know I, I'm, I'm assuming they only have headlong rush. So let's go Tuscany now. The great Tusk of our own. Spike's going to hurt a little bit, but it's fine. Now, I think we go for a rapid spin here because I think they're going to go for a headlong rush. They actually withdraw. Interesting. And they go into Ogre Pond, which is also interesting. So Ogre Pond comes in. We go for a rapid spin, which does a respectable amount of damage, to be fair. And the spikes do disappear. So Heatran's going to thank be thankful for that. Now, do we go for an Ice Spinner? I think we go for an Ice Spinner here all the time here. Because I'm fairly confident we can actually live one Ivy Cudgel. We do live one Ivy Cudgel, which is nice. Ice Spinner comes through. Maybe I should have Rapid Spinned again there. Nah, it doesn't matter anyway. We won't have KO'd. We won't have KO'd. So let's go for another Ice Spinner just to try and get to see what we can do. I think for an Ivy Cudgel, though, we are going to die to that, unfortunately. As Great Tusk did well to take the first one, but the second one was just a bit too much for it. So Great Tusk goes down. And now... Let's go into Heatran. So Hot Rod the Heatran comes in. I'm pretty confident Heatran can take one. But they've got a Great Tusk in the back and a Scizor. So I'm like, oh. Let's go for a Lava Plume anyway. They go for an Ivy Cudgel. We might, we might take one if we do. That's awesome. But I don't think we do. Oh, we do. We take it like a champ. Lava Plume comes through. And that takes out the Ogre Pond, which is fantastic. So Ogre Pond's down. Now, if this, if this Great Tusk is not invested in speed, we might actually outspeed and go for a, a Lava Plume here. We might. Aurora Veil has wore off. Um, I knew the Aurora Veil was up, but I, I'm still surprised by how well we took those hits. So with the Aurora Veil uh, gone, um, we are now very susceptible to any hit attack. So let's go for a Lava Plume and hope we outspeed. We don't outspeed. Headlong Rush comes through. That takes our Heatran. That is going to be the game. So G, G to my opponent. That was a really fun one. Definitely came down to it a bit. Definitely came down to it, but I like the Terra Steel Great Tusk. That was really cool. And that's a wrap. Zoroark's Illusion ability can turn any battle into a mind game. And when played right, it's an absolute game changer. Now it's your turn to try it out. I've put together this team so you can experience Zoroark's tricks for yourself. The rental code is right here on screen, so go ahead and test that on your own battles. Let me know how it works for you in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next battle. Good luck out there.